Hey, everybody, and welcome to another How to Write APA Style Results Sections video with me, Dr. Swan. All right, so today we are going to follow up on a video that was released on the channel in the last couple of months um, regarding factorial designs, and we did a between subjects design results section, and so now we're going to do a repeated measures results section, which is going to have only repeated measures variables in it, and so it's going to look extremely similar to our between subjects design right here, factorial results section, but you know, we're gonna try something new and you're gonna see how you pull the data here from slightly different looking output. I'm using Jamovi, as you can see here, version 2.3.22 as of today, that is the current version for Macs. 2.3.24 2. Uh, is the current version for Windows if you are a Windows user. So like I said, it's gonna be quite the same when, when it comes down to it, but what I wanna do is I wanna show you how the, your data should be set up. So I have this, CSV file that we are going to use. It's a it's a canned file from Max and Ungehina, 1999, used for explaining how to set up uh, a repeated measures design. I'm going to have a link in the description down below where you can grab this data and work through it with me if you'd like. But as you can see, it's not that big of a data set. So we got to open this CSV into Jamovi. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go up to open here and we're going to go to this PC and we're going to go to browse, browse, and I'm going to look for RM fac ANOVA. And it's going to give me this one, and I'm going to open that, and there we go. Here it is in one, two, three, four, five, and then we have C1, C and T. So this is how it's set up. We have essentially a three by three factorial design. So it's not going to be a two by two, even though I wrote up two by two here in the thing. It's fine. We're we're just going to to move on from there. So we have uh, to pull out the design elements here. So I'm going to copy and paste some things over. Okay. So this is a three by three design. Again, doesn't really matter what we're writing here within with win, then uh, IV1 is going to be condition because it's a canned example. These actually don't mean much of anything. Uh, it's very hard to find uh, a within measure, within subjects or repeated measures. You can also write repeated measures here if you want to, put that in brackets to make it clear. So IV2 is going to be trial, okay? So each person, we've got five subjects, each person does three different conditions and then three different trials within each of those conditions. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna call the DV score and we have an N of five, okay? So those are the details that we need um, that generally speaking come from the design section. So you wouldn't really have to repeat them too much in this. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull again the results of the main effects, uh, main effects, oops, 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 there we go pull the results in here. I'm doing I'm doing a great job, y'all. All right. So a two by two, but that's not right. So a three by three uh, factorial Let's replace that again. You can put repeated measures in place of within subjects if you want uh, was conducted to determine the main effects and interaction of the three conditions and the three trials within those conditions on the participants scores. There we go. Okay. So we've got that. Um, I don't, what, oh, let's get rid of, hey, alrighty, let's get an extra space here. And let's do, so we've set that up. Let's do the actual analysis here. So how we do this again, I have videos on how to do repeated measures, ANOVAs here uh, on the channel. So definitely take a look for those. I have two videos on how to do it in Jamovi. I have a video or two on how to do it in Jasp and so on and so forth. So what we do is we need to go up to ANOVA and all repeated measures ANOVAs have to be done in the repeated measures ANOVA uh, module because of the way that the data is set up. It cannot be set up the same way as a between subject factor where you have a single variable for whatever group that a, a, a person is in. There is a DV embedded in each of our variables. So if we go back to the data, there's a variable or a score, a DV embedded in here. We don't have just a separate variable for group and a separate variable for score. We have the DV of score embedded in with these variables. So if we go back to our repeated measures, ANOVA, again, it's gonna be off to the side until I, I clear it. So what we need to do is we need to set up um, the ordering here. So RM factor one is going to be the one that appears first in each of these. So that's going to be condition. And then we're going to have uh, level one, level two, and level three. Okay. Uh, I want level three. Enter. There we go. And then we need an RM factor two, which is trial. And then we want level A, level B, and level C, which is fine. It doesn't really matter. I've got one, two, three. Um, just remember that you know, however you have this set up. My, my best piece of advice is to set up your two uh, RN factors in the same order that they appear here. So you can put them in the same order that they appear here, right? So we've got one A, we've got one, one. Oh, well, let's just ch change it to one. Yeah, let's just do that because it's two and uh, it, because we're using the same words again, it puts a two next to them. So one, 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 two, one, three, two, one, 
and so on and so forth. So that's what we can do. And how you can do that is you can hold shift down and click the top and the bottom of the list and plop them over. And this is what ends up happening. Okay, gets them all in the right place. And then you can double check. We have no between subject factors. We have no available covariates. We can call this score. We can get our generalized uh, eta squared, which again is the newest eta squared value. We can also get partial eta squared if we want to for each of these variables, condition and trial. Okay, and it will uh, give us all of that. I am going to grab our post hocs here just in case we need them. And we're going to do a Bonferroni correction because that's how I appreciate doing that. And let's go ahead and get our plots here for this. Okay. And we can get our tables as well. Our error bars are going to be standard errors because I, uh, I like that better. Okay. I'm not going to do anything else. Uh, we could get assumption checks if we really wanted to. Actually, let's get the sphericity check just to make sure that Mockley, it's all good. So that's great. All right. Let's close that and let's drag this over so we can all see it. All right, so what are we looking at here? What are we looking at? We have no stati no statistically significant results, and that's okay because honestly, it doesn't really matter. You're going to put the results in the same way if something was statistically significant or not, and that's all right, okay? The closest one here is a difference of condition, but you have to be aware that this sample data set, this fictional data set of just random scores of ra really random integers is only five. There are only five, and while five participants doesn't necessarily screw you over with a, uh, a within subjects design or repeated measures design it is still a bit of a struggle to find uh to find effects especially if those effects are small so uh condition is the closest one to an effect with a p-value of 0.06 but no dice there and then we have two that are no different at all 0.94 and 0.94 trial and the interaction itself so nothing really there. And again, we can go into post hocs. There's not going to be anything in the post hocs, of course. Um, and you can see here that condition, not a big difference between level one and level two. It's almost there, perhaps if we had a few more people in this data set. OK, and then there's definitely no change for trial. All of those error bars are overlapping. So there is there is no difference at all. And then here is our uh, interaction and essentially very similar, uh, very similar even though some of these lines intersect the what I would say here is that the situation is and the shape of these lines is rather similar, which is why you end up with why you end up with no interaction. OK, and then you can see here why why there's no interaction. I mean, look, we're, we're talking about just a below eight uh, down here or eight, even eight. Right. And then only above nine or somewhere around nine over here. So there's not a lot of movement in scores. I'm sure if I went back through this data set and just changed some of these scores to be much bigger. Uh, in some of the things, then we could we could end up with a significant uh, set of uh, fake data. But we, like I said, can do this on our own. Now, I'm going to break this up between um, paragraphs, uh, one for each main effect and the interaction. So three different paragraphs. You can include them in all a single paragraph. The only reason why I'm doing it is for the video. So let's say here uh, for the variable condition, participants did not show any significant differences between the three conditions. And then we can do we can do means and standard deviations. We could do uh, just the F test. So let's go ahead and throw in means and standard deviations just because it is a fun thing to do. Let's grab uh, from this so I don't have to between the three conditions. And I'm just going to put this in parentheses one and then do this and then semicolon two colon put that there, semicolon three, and then close that, right? So condition one, condition two, and condition three. This is one way they can do this. You can also put this in a table or you can use one of these graphs, you know? Totally, you could say, it's, you know, see figure one, see table one, whatever. Whatever works for you. And then we're gonna do comma and then we're gonna do F, or actually I'm gonna grab it since everything's italicized. And we're just gonna replace the numbers. How's that sound, everyone? Very cool. All right, so let's go through and replace some numbers here. So what we gotta do is we gotta find, those are the postdocs, excuse me. We're gonna find these, okay? And again, we've only got standard error as opposed to uh, standard uh, def uh, deviation, but we can do easily do the conversion between SD and SE by uh, inverse of finding the standard uh, standard error, right? So the standard deviation, or the standard error is the standard deviation divided by the square root of N. And so the standard deviation is the standard error times the square root of N. And we already know what N is, and that's five. So let's go ahead and put level one here, 7.87, and our standard deviation. Let's go ahead and pull up the calculator so you can all see what I'm doing as opposed to just doing it in my head. All right, all right so I've got the calculator, calculator right, here. right here. So let's go ahead and do some math. Um, and I've got all of this stuff here, so I'm going to use my keyboard so you can see me typing in stuff. So um, let's do five square root times 0. 0.455. 1.017 or 1.02. Let's change that here. 1.02. Perfect. And then the mean for... Uh, two is 9.53, and let's go back here. Let's pull this up. Let's clear all of that. Five square root 2.236 times 0.467 equals 1.04, 1.04. And then the last one here is mean of 9.33. And let's clear this to five square root times 
0.316 equals 0.7066 or 0.71 is what I'll do. So 0.71, 0.71. Perfect. Okay, and let's grab the F statistics from up here. This is the one we're looking at, condition, sum of squares, and its error is 2, 8. So we're going to put 2 here and an 8 here. And then that F statistic is 4.0216 or 4.02 is what I'll put it. Okay, and then the p-value is 0.062. And we'll do partial a to squared because we can, which is 0.50. Now, this is a pretty, pretty big effect. To be honest with you, it's a pretty big within subject effect. You can see that the generalized a to squared is actually a lot smaller than this. So it depends on how you want to handle that uh, in this situation. But you can see here that this effect is almost, almost discovered, almost observed, except we don't have enough participants, right? This is an underpowered little example here. So let's then move on to, um, for the trial variable, participants uh, also did not show a significant difference between the three trials within each condition. So essentially no main effect, right? And I'm just going to do the same thing. Oops, I'm actually not putting the comma there, we'll put it after the parentheses here. And we just do this all over again. So we go here to, we've got our, our levels here, we've got end up with 9.00. And again, same standard error thing that we're doing here. So let's do the math, five square root times 0.258, and that is gonna equal 0.57. Uh, 6, or just 0.58, 0 0.58, 0 0.58, and mean 2 is going to be 8.93 uh, with the standard deviation, a little bit more, okay? So 5 times, uh, or the square root of 5 times 0.34 equals 76, 0 0.76, 0 0.76, 0 0.76. And I'm putting the preceding 0, just in case you're uh, not uh, aware, is if the number can be, uh, the APA rule is if the number can be uh, greater than one, then you put the preceding zero to show that. If it can't be greater than one, then you don't necessarily need the preceding zero like I do with my p-values here. And um, I guess I should put it with uh, my partial latest. Although technically they don't end up going above one. Uh, all right, so we're gonna do it. Oh, I didn't actually enter it in 8.80. Perfect, all right. And so this is going to be five square root times 0.512, oh boy, 1.14. Yeah, you can definitely see how big that gets. Look at this. You see, they get bigger and bigger, right? So we've got 0.58, we've got 0.76, and we've got 1.14. They just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. Wow. All right, back up here for the F statistic. So we are now looking at this line. We've got trial and its error term here. So uh, our degrees of freedom are the same because we've got the same amount of participants and the same amount of trials as condition. So we're going to leave 2 and 8. And this one is 0 0.06. This is a very, 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 very small F. 0 0.06. And the p-value is 0.94. And the partial a to squared is basically 0.02. It's, that's an extremely small effect, and it's not really going anywhere. Okay. All right. And then finally is the interaction. You do main effects first, and then interaction. Um, the interaction between condition and trial was not significant. And here I'm just going to put the F statistic. We're not even going to put our... That's a lot of cell means. It's three by three. I don't really feel like writing that in this video. So uh, let's see. F is not 2, 8. And so condition trial, here we go. We have got a 4 and 16. And that equals point, and F equals 0.9, P is the same, 0.94, and the partial data squared was 0.046 or 0.05, and then uh, period. Uh, we could say that, um, that it appears that the trial did not have a, an impact on condition. Oops. The trial did not have an impact on, con uh, on condition with participants. Uh, let's change on here to with and then on participants' scores. There we go. All right. And that's it. That is a APA style results section. Now, it's a bit of a bummer that we've got, uh, that we don't have any significant effects, but that's what happens sometimes. And honestly, I'm okay with uh, showing, especially my students who typically end up with null results uh, rather than positive or predicted results in their, their studies because, you know, they're doing it in a semester and it's, it's hard to get, it's hard to find effects. Uh, in that kind of setting, you really need to have spend a lot of time in theory. You need to spend a lot of time with methodology. It's just it's tough. So I know that there's no positive effects here or or predicted significant results here, but that's okay. This is what it would look like if you got a three by three repeated measures ANOVA with absolutely no effects. What would it, what would your results section look like? Well, essentially this, and then the discussion section would be like, "Yo, what is the meaning of this? What is the meaning of this? You know that kind of thing." So 
you know, take, uh, take, take, take this as what you will. will. Um, again, you, you need to write, write more and explain more if there are significant results, but essentially you could do the same thing on how this looks if you have repeated measures, uh, ANOVAs, factorial ANOVAs that look just like this. And that's how you do a repeated measures, factorial design, APA style results section. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions, or general feedback, please leave those in the comment section down below. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.